What's up guys, another knife review. Uh, today we're going to be looking at a Spyderco Paramilitary 2. Uh, this is the very standard uh, Black G10 version. Of course there's a couple different versions of it. But uh, I got this in a trade. When I got it in the trade it was brand new. And uh, what I want to do is use it a bunch, carry it a lot, and uh, and not, not sharpen it. I mean a lot of times I'll strap my knives at the end of the day, you know, and just keep that really fine edge. But I want to keep it completely real and show you what the edge retention has been like with the S30V. So since uh, first using this, I'm talking probably four weeks or so um, of just constant EDC you know, work, uh, little tasks here and there. I did go out of my way maybe three or four days to cut up some cardboard and some plastic jugs, uh, water containers. But uh, besides that, just normal use. Um, the blade is a little bit dirty. You see there. Haven't cleaned it, haven't sharpened it, nothing. Just it was new, and now it's not. It's been used. But I want to uh, check out the um, edge retention again with uh, just some paper cutting. So first I'm going to give you some specs, and then we'll go into that. So first off, again, this is the Paramilitary 2. There were some slight changes from the original. They narrowed the butt end a little bit here for better ergonomics. Um, they're really, they're very similar. There's not many changes at all. Uh, a couple things I do like about this knife, before we get into that, I'll give you the, the specs. Now, I love Spyderco. Their website, they, their specs are so detailed, unlike any other company out there. I mean, they go into the sixteenths of an inch. They give you not only blade length, but, you know, the actual cutting edge and all kinds of stuff, blade thickness. I'm not going to get it that in-depth. If you're interested, check out the link. But, overall, it's just under 4-inch blade. Again, that's uh, S30V, stainless steel. Preferred knife steel for a lot of different uh, knives. Um... I say under 4 inches, it's 3 and 7 16 inches. Uh, the handle is again a little bit under 5, it's 4 and 13 16 of an inch. And the overall length being just under 9, 8 and 9 30 seconds of an inch. That's pretty precise stuff right there. But <laughs> to get an idea, there it is in my hand. I would classify this as a medium sized folding knife. Uh, weight on this is 3.75 ounces, which I think is a perfect weight. It's got a little bit of a I wouldn't say beefiness to it, but you know it's there. It doesn't feel like it's a lightweight, but it's not heavy. It doesn't drag you down, and you do actually forget it's in your pocket. So, very, very cool. What sets us apart from a lot of other knives is that compression lock on the back. We'll go over that in just a minute. It's kind of like a reverse liner lock. As we open the blade, you'll see that springs over and uh, locks up with the tank. It is a perfect lockup. There's no slop, no, nothing you know, vertical or horizontal. It's, uh, it's, it's a great, great lock. This is actually my second experience with the compression lock, and I've been happy both times. The only thing I would change with this is I would put a little bit of uh, some texturing or grooves on the locking mechanism itself. It tends to, I mean, when you're playing with a knife a lot, it tends to irritate the hand just a tiny, tiny bit, you know, the tip of your finger, just being flat like that. I do like how they kept it flush. There's no chance once the knife's open to, you know, accidentally uh, grab that. Now, if you do keep a, um, a saber grip like this, and you somehow, you know, put some pressure to the left, there is a possibility that the, the fat of your thumb can disunlock the gauge and maybe close the knife. It's very, very rare. Uh, I don't think anyone's had a particular problem with that at all. You really have to be careless. But most of the time, just go with a natural grip. You're going to be fine. Or you can even put the thumb up here. Just make sure you're not putting any, any pressure to the side. Usually when you're cutting, obviously you're putting it down into the cutting motion. You could be cutting back and forth. You could be, you know, putting that tip in. Whatever. But uh, it's very rare that I ever heard, I never heard of a case where it, it unlocked on accident. So I don't think it's going to be an issue. Alright, so I'm just going to do a quick little uh, cutting demo. Got a regular piece of paper here. I'm going to try different portions of the edge. Again, not touched up at all. Heck of a lot of you, uh, use on this knife, about four weeks or so. So we'll see where we're at here. Nice clean slice. Seems like it's cutting clean. It can use a little bit of a touch up. The edge is slightly toothy at this point. I would call this a utility edge. It's not that scalpel shaving sharp anymore, but it's definitely a usable edge. Try different portions of the edge here. The base and needs a little bit touching up. Move up a little bit. That rip didn't even cut. ripping towards the base. I 
you can see it's not that sharp anymore. Still a utility edge there. This is real. This is where we're at. Alright, so it's not really cleanly slicing through paper much at all. Uh, the first couple passes it was actually cutting through, but it had a little bit of a rough edge. You can find one of these. It's not uh, completely clean. You can feel the drag as you're going through. And then from that point on, it just got worse and worse, where it's not even grabbing the edge enough to start the cut. Once you initiate the cut, see at that point, it grabbed and then literally just ripped the paper. It didn't cut through it at all. So Sometimes it will, sometimes it won't. It really depends on your technique and your angle and stuff too. But you can see the cut here. Let's see if I get real close. It's not very clean at all. However, all things considered, it held a great edge. It still opens boxes. It still does a lot of utility work. It certainly will not shave anymore. Uh, it's not shaving sharp, which is fine. But uh, it still gets the job done. Had this been, say, an AUS-8 or, you know, CR-13MOV or similar, something along those lines, it definitely would have been completely dull. I'd probably be able to drag it across my arm. But uh, S30V has been a great performing steel. Again, this is something that has been um, used and completely neglected just for testing. Um, not sharpened at all. What I would usually do is at the end of each day, when I'm done using it, I would strop it up to make sure I retain that edge. But anyway, just a real test there for you. I'll show you what it's like. So, if you want to walk away with some kind of a lesson learned, someone can break out a knife in their pocket and say, yeah, I got S30V. And you go, well, can you sharpen your knives? Because <laughs> maybe that won't matter. But anyway, I'm going to show you a couple different ways to open this knife. Things I've been playing around with. The uh, compression lock is a little bit different if you're not used to this. Um, the easiest thing to do is just manually, how you would always do it. You know, use your, your thumb here, just kind of flick it open like any other Spyderco. And what I decide I do is uh, get my fingers out of the way, the channel here, because this is my natural grip. Let me start from the beginning again. Flick it open, get the fingers out of the channel there. I come across, use the pointer finger just to... Move your compression lock over, and then swing it shut. Okay, that's the easiest way to do it. Of course, you don't have to flick it. You can do it slower, you know, as to not scare anyone. Another way I can do this is once it's open, turn it completely around. Um, use your thumb again. Now, I'm covering the channel here. Use your thumb again to uh, unlock the blade, you know, remove that from the tang. And with most spider codes, because the tang extends past here, they usually have a finger troll of some kind. You can always, and I wouldn't really recommend this for everyone, but if you're familiar with knives, um, you can just throw it forward and the tang will actually hit your finger as opposed to the edge. Okay, so once you undo the lock, just throw forward. It will always stop at your finger without cutting yourself. Then you reposition your grip and close it. Okay, so again, another way to do it, just, just like that. Now there's a really fun way to do it, and it's kind of impressive looking for people who aren't into knives, is once you're, uh, you're about to open the knife here, instead of pushing forward with your thumb, put your pointer finger through the hole so your finger's almost touching. Okay, just like that. Alright, instead of, again, flicking the knife open, what we're going to do is we're going to put our fingers together and flip the, nuff, the knife up. <laughs> flip the knuff. Yeah, that sounded good, didn't it? <laughs> Outtake number one. Put your fingers together through the hole and flick up, okay? But what you're doing is you're not really grabbing the knife. Your fingers are just kind of holding, you know, touching each other. And this loosely is going to glide through your hands, okay? So you just kind of flip it up like that. Once it gets up to this position, then I actually pinch the edge. I pinch the steel. My fingers are no longer touching through the hole. Then I just push down all the way. Then you flick downwards. The weight of the handle will open the knife to the lock position. Then you can get your, your grip here. So again, just to go over this, looks like you're about to open the knife, but you're not. You're flipping up, opening it like that, repositioning. Pretty cool little way to do it. Um, of course, it's not for everyone. From this position here, you can actually get in and do some of your tighter work by holding it like that as well. So it's pretty cool. But you can also do it kind of like the access lock where you never have to even touch the opening hole, which by the way is oversized to accommodate gloves and such. So it kind of makes it more of the military version. Um, it is more tactical, so if you're using gloves or something, it is easy to open. You don't have to worry about thumb studs or a small hole there. There's no way you're going to miss that thing. But anyway, um, like the access lock or even some lockbacks, if you compress the lock, it will remove any pressure from the tang. The blade will move freely. 
So if you want to open it without touching the blade at all, just push the compression lock in, flick it out, it's locked. You can do the same thing to close it. Make sure your fingers are out of the way, push the lock in, and close it. So, another way to open it. A bunch of different ways to open this knife. It's pretty cool. It's a lot of fun to play with. You will find once you have it in your hand, you just can't stop playing with it. Pretty cool. Overall G10, everything you would expect. Um, same as other Spydercos as far as texture. It's not overly aggressive, very comfortable. You see a torque screw construction. You do have a four-way clip, uh, tip up, tip down, left or right hand carry. I did swap the clip for a right hand tip up carry. Just something I prefer. So when I take the knife out, it comes like this out of the pocket, flick the blade open, good to go. Usually just grab it like that and close it right in the pocket. So really, really simple. I do love the oversized lanyard hole here makes uh, putting lanyards on very easy. Um, this size knife, I usually don't use a lanyard on. However, I like the option there. It's pretty cool. Um, beefy knife, full flat ground blade, extremely effective. S30V, like I said, is, is also very effective. If you're into jimping and all kinds of grooves and stuff, it's finely cut. They did a very good job here. It continues into the top of the liners right here, and it's completely functional. Your thumb really locks in between the ramp and the texturing on the jimping. It's very good if you like that kind of a thing. I personally, it's not a necessity for my knives, but uh, it is a nice thing. It's very comfortable um, up against your palm. A lot of times knives, the in, inner portion of the handle will be comfortable, but it will be kind of an awkward shape. This form fits to the palm. Most of the times when I have a knife that's uncomfortable in my hand, it's usually right in this area where it's poking me or it's a little jagged or whatever. This is not. This is, is very comfortable in this position here. Or, of course, if you want to choke up on it and use that finger choil, which is always very nice to have. Again, closer, finer, more detailed cutting. So, really cool knife. Price on this, retail anywhere from 80 to 120 Again, I got this one in a trade, so I didn't have to buy it. Um, however, depending on the, the variant of it, you know, the style and so forth, and where you're finding it from, like I said, between 80 and 120 bucks. So, about 100 bucks overall. I think it's well worth the money, and uh, I think you'd be happy with it course made in golden colorado usa earth i love that the only knife company on the planet that writes earth on their blade just in case you get confused as to where it's made all right so i'm just gonna do a quick little macro here of the blade you could say it's a little beat up but uh that's just because it's been used very cool though i like the overall look just the black and stainless is very clean look like i said if i was gonna make any kind of uh uh, modifications to this knife to make it better or any suggestions to Spyderco would just be I mean really the only thing I think this knife needs is just a tiny bit of texturing uh, maybe some um, uh, not not really stippling but I would say knurling the same as you'd see on flashlight that crisscross uh, pattern on the face of this compression lock just so you have a little bit more grip here and it's a little more comfy but again I do like how you kept it flush so the to really minimize any chance of that lock accidentally disengaging while using the knife. So, really cool. One of my new favorite EDC knives. I had to put away the Sebenza to get this thing. Right after I, I started carrying the Sebenza, um, I had the trade offer. And I got it right away in the mail. So, anyway, that's all. Spyderco Power Military 2. One of my new favorite knives. Thanks for watching, guys. I appreciate it. Hope you enjoy the rest of your day. Take care.